Today's problem, why is my sand always so dirty? But we've got the top 10 things to make that old news. This is Beers TV Problem Solvers. If dirty sand is your problem, this video is the solution, starting with number one. So shallow sand beds, meaning about an inch or less, should be cleaned and turned over by livestock. Livestock meaning fish and inverts. There's a whole bunch of different things. Now that might sound obvious, uh, but it isn't to many. Actually, if you just let the sand sit there stagnant, don't be surprised when all kinds of slimes grow on it. Don't be surprised mm -hmm. when diatoms grow on it. Don't be surprised when algae is growing all over it and it just looks like crap. <laughs> uh, we can actually have livestock do all the work for you that will sift and turn over the sand for you and do all that work, starting with some of the fish. Yeah, one of my favorite is the uh, sand sifting gobies, diamond watch gobies. These things, uh, you can not only can you sit there and watch them, all day long uh, just picking up scoops of sand and sifting it through but they're actually like feeding on the things in that sand and they constantly turn it over wherever they're hanging out clean sand is all around them <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> uh, those are probably the most aggressive uh, fish mm -hmm. for clean sand but also a lot of tangs you can actually see them especially if algae grown in the sand mm -hmm. they'll come down there and turn it over uh, but there's other things man you have sand sifting stars you have nisaria snails that will you know like have a little snorkel and they go swimming around <laughs> underneath the sand and pop it up they're turning it over you have even uh, your copepods mm -hmm. and amphipods your hermit crabs uh, like constantly anything, picking yeah anything that's covering on the sand turn it over these are the things that will actually prevent like you'll never even know you had a problem because the livestock will solve it for you Number two, if you're not going to use livestock to turn over the sand, there is a manual option. Yeah, so if instead of having the livestock do the work, you actually have to do the work. And that means you're just going to manually siphon the sand, particularly on water change day when you're uh, changing out the water. Anyway, one of my favorite tools personally is this little skinny wand detail. I call it the detail wand from Python, but it not only uh, doesn't take out as much water as one of the bigger ones, but uh, I can actually reach some of those hard to reach areas back behind rocks and under crevices and under uh, you know different archways and whatnot. And uh, here's a good tip also that you can do, put a fresh filter sock in and just siphon the sand and the water back down through the filter sock and then pull the filter sock afterwards. I didn't even think of that one. <laughs> so uh, I actually like the uh, bigger versions of this and it probably depends on the size of your tank. But one of the things that happens when you get the bigger siphon is you can actually turn over and tumble a mm. lot more sand and you don't really need a valve or anything to control it. All you need to do is just pinch the tube. And so while you're doing your siphoning, you can pinch and open the tube and it'll prevent the, the tumbling to get up into the tubing. And you can really control how it tumbles just by opening and closing your hand. So this is something you want to do periodically mm -hmm. is if you can clean the sand, not only will you get the gunk off and turn it over so all those things that thrive on light are now covered up, but also you're getting the gunk out that fuels that growth as well. All right, number three, you mentioned photosynthetic organisms. That means the lights above your tank are probably causing the brown town down in your sand, in which case there's a couple options that you can choose to be cognizant of to stop that from happening. Yeah, so uh, all the slime, the cyano, yeah. diatoms, uh, uh, dinos, algae, all of its stuff is growing off of light. And if I have twice the amount of light, I'll probably grow it twice as fast, <laughs> maybe even faster. And so here are a couple of the solutions. One is uh, you should actually maybe turn the lights down in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the beginning stages, there's not a lot of coral in there, but there's tons of brown gunk in your sand turn the lights down and watch it grow a lot slower. And you'll find that a lot of the other biome in the tank eventually outcompetes those things. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing though, is you actually need to measure it to know where you're at. Right. Yeah, so uh, get yourself a hand, get your hands on a tool, maybe borrow one from a friend. Uh, you can kind of, re you can, you know, buy one from us, but then return it about 60 days later. Uh, but still, like, if, you, if I don't know where the par is in my tank, uh, then I don't know where to turn it down to. We have goal ranges. If you have the LPS type of tank or SP or LPS softy tank, 75 to 150 average in the tank is spot on. And SPS tank, uh, anywhere between two to 350, 
350 being the razor's edge of high. So maybe tone it down to a more of that 200 range. So you can imagine uh, how much more algae and slime you'll grow at 300 par than 75. Right. Uh, it's quite a bit different. But beyond that, you should also make an intelligent approach to lighting the tank anyway. And so uh, at BRS here, we will allow you to buy the thing, use it for two months, which will take you through this entire cycle, allow you to tune the thing perfectly, also fight some of the nasties mm. and the ugly stages in a tank, uh, and then send it back to us with a small restocking fee. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier. So when you're thinking about all the slime, think photosynthetic energy because that's most of what's feeding it. Number four, if your tank is brand new, it's just a light dusting of brown on the sand. It's probably just diatoms and part of the new stage of many tanks and leaving it alone is actually the solution. Yeah, so you don't need to go chase that white sand dragon and uh, doing everything under the sun to try to control it. Just let it be for a little while. It should typically run its course and then afterwards focus on the clean sand. You'd be surprised how often the solution in reefing is stop worrying about it and it'll just solve itself. <laughs> All right, number five, if it's green hair algae or green algae, that is a definite sign that the sand isn't turning over enough. That means all of the organics in there are sitting in long enough to fuel algae growth and we're not doing anything about it, but there is a solution. The reason that uh, I would say that is because the slimes can replicate in a matter of hours. Mm. Algaes actually have to like root into the surface that it's gonna grow on in most cases. And if it's doing that, this sand definitely is not right. turning over at all. So look at those cucumbers, look at the fish, look at everything, including even, you know, some bacterial solutions like vibrant, mm. which uh, the predator in this case is actually bacteria that will go and eat uh, all the algae off. But really, if you can see it growing green in the sand, the big thing is start to turn it over. And I think the best solution here outside of the things we've already discussed is flow get flow in there, they will gently turn it over, periodic surges, and it'll probably solve your problem. Number six, there is one that is 100% related to flow as well, and that is? Brown gunk and detritus. Detritus meaning fish poops and uneaten food, and it just builds up brown gunk in there. It's not really growing anything, but it just looks nasty, you can see it. Uh, in which case, flow 100% to keep the detritus and that uneaten food suspended in a water column so that it can get to your filtration, siphoning to just manually remove it. So the big tip here I'll give you is get a turkey baster and just blow mm. the surface of the rock around in your sand and see where the poofs come from. Uh, wherever the poofs are is where all of the like or decaying organic matter is just settling out in the sand and creating that brown grunk that's gonna feed everything. So just go around there and then solve it with flow. Flow will keep all that stuff suspended and prevent this from happening. Number seven, if your problem is not brown sand, but instead red, purple, sheets of it, just a whole bunch of it, slime covering everything, you should be looking towards cyano. Cyano is like a really, really common thing in our hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say there's like cyano shaming out there. People go out <laughs> and like, uh, look at your dirty tank. It is super duper common. So, and it's also the easiest possible thing to solve yes. as long as you listen to the right guidance. Uh, uh, and the first thing is, is it's not related to nutrients. It's not related to nitrate and phosphate. I've never ever seen anybody solve uh, a cyano problem by controlling nitrate phosphate yep. one way or another. But I have seen many, 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 many people solve it with flow, meaning you just blow it off the surface. You can get high enough flow in there, it just doesn't collect anywhere. Right. However, after that, just don't uh, kick yourself in the butt trying a lot of effort on this because there's a couple of really so uh, easy solutions. One is CyanoClean. This is a natural outcompeting bacteria. This one takes, uh, takes probably a, longer. a few weeks, maybe mm -hmm. even a little longer that of dosing this and then it'll just naturally dissipate. I tend to prefer this solution because it is a, a little bit more natural. And if it took me a few weeks to get into this problem, it should take me a few weeks to get out of the problem as well, yep. uh, just so I'm not like shocking the tank. However, there's also ChemiClean in here and there's mm -hmm. also Red Slime Remover. Yeah, those are like basically your hammer solutions to the problem. Antibacterial type, uh, you know, medications that you dose to the tank, but they absolutely work. I would not be afraid or ashamed of using it. 
Yeah, dude, uh, 10 years ago, people said use it as a last result, mm. a resort. I would use it now anytime. <laughs> I don't want to have red gunk all over my tank. I Everybody here has used this for decades yep. now. Uh, we've used a red slime remover, remover and ChemiClean. I've never once, as long as you follow the instructions on the packaging, ever seen a negative yep. result other than all that ugly you know, red <laughs> stuff in the tank just disappears. You do want to watch your skimmer because a lot of times that will cause your skimmer to overflow. So maybe turn it down a little bit or keep an eye on it, but 100% works. Yeah, so if you're having that problem, ChemiClean, also the CyanoClean from uh, KZ, one of these options will absolutely solve that problem for you. All right, number eight, if none of that works for Cyano, it's probably actually dinos now. Uh, I would always start with the cyanos because it's just so easy to solve with that stuff. And like a vast, vast majority of cases, if this doesn't solve it, it's probably dinos, which are harder to deal with. But there is one solution that works at least half the time and almost instantly. Yeah, so UV sterilizer is one to consider, and there's multiple options out there. Uh, we, we did this on the 750XXL. We saw dynos in there. We put a UV sterilizer off to the side with a pump inside the display. We ran it overnight, came back, lo and behold, the dyno problem was gone. However, it did come back, so we ended up permanently installing a UV sterilizer just so we didn't have to continually battle this problem. By coming back, meaning we took the UV off and yes. eventually it came back. So yeah, just having it on there all the time just prevents it. So this is one of the things you can look for to know that UV would solve that slime that you mm, have in your sand. there's different types. Yeah, there's different types of these dinos. The type that goes away at night, so go look at your tank at midnight or 1 a.m. or even before the lights come on in the morning, if a lot of that slime has dissipated into the water but then comes back as soon as the lights come back on, this thing will solve it almost certainly. And by this thing, I mean you can go install a UV right into your plumbing the right way. You can also probably just use a hang on just for this uh, 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 instance, mm -hmm. the bigger the better. Uh, you can also get a UV that you just throw a pump over the side of it and then feed it back into this tank. It won't look pretty, but it will look a lot prettier than that red <laughs> slime all over the sand. So uh, there's different solutions here, but in a lot of cases, this thing that you've been fighting with and you just can't seem to solve anywhere, well, one piece of equipment can actually solve it completely. Number nine, so you hooked a UV sterilizer up and you still cannot fight these dinos anywhere. There are other solutions, blackout period being one of them. Yeah, so all this stuff, again, is photosynthetically charged, mm -hmm. right? So the more light, uh, the faster it's going to grow. You eliminate the light and it goes away. That is one of the things also with dinos you can see pretty fast. If you just turn off the lights and it all just goes away, it will generally go away faster than cyan or right. does. Yep. Uh, so in that case, a dark period, as long as the, t the corals will tolerate, and when I say dark, I mean like black it out. Cover the tank, yeah. Yeah, just really get it as dark as humanly possible. Uh, that will make it so you don't have to do it as long. A lot of people will do it up to a week, and yes, that may shock the corals a little bit, uh, but all that uh, like dinos growing all over them is also not good for them either. <laughs> so you're trying to beat this. There's another solution, and it's actually bacteria this one's super common and there's a lot of different ones that people use yeah so brightwell has some uh brightwell microbacter clean uh dr tim's has a couple of options that people have helped work refresh being one of them this waste away also being another one uh you know vibrant has been uh, said to help as well but these are bacteria. basically you're trying to outcompete a bacteria with a, be a better more beneficial bacteria and there's products out there for you i think the brightwell like uh, microbacter 7 is mm. one of the more commonly said ones. I will say it isn't exactly clear which one of these does it best, right. but there's no question that adding uh, like a biome or other bacteria sources that outcompete the dinos for the territory is a big part of that solution. So a lot of times what people will do is darken out the mm. tank and then they will add in the outcompeting bacteria that aren't photosynthetic they'll establish on the surfaces and you turn the lights on and then they'll struggle to come back. Yeah. But there's actually one other reason or way to fight it as well. Yeah, so the a lot of times people report dinos coming and, or having a hard time with dinos, and, but they have their nitrate zero and they have their phosphate zero. That might actually be part of the problem. This is just theorized, mm -hmm. uh, but it's theorized by a lot of people. <laughs> uh, and a lot of people believe that if you have zero nitrate, zero phosphate, meaning like near zero, true zero, right? It's like not available in the tank at all. That dinos actually are able to function in that environment fairly well. 
but the other things in the tank, the bacteria and the other organisms in the tank aren't able to scavenge for nitrogen and phosphorus as easily and that's why the dinos actually just take over all the available area. Mm -hmm. So in many cases just dosing a little bit of nitrate or phosphate or up your feeding game a little bit uh, may actually solve the problem as well. So if you have dinos, the hardest ones that aren't reactive to the UV, dark period, probably some bacteria, and make sure you're not at zero, zero. Number 10, we're hitting dinos pretty hard here because it is that slime that's so hard to actually beat in many tanks. And if none of the other things that we uh, have talked about have worked for you, there is a sledgehammer solution. And the Dino X absolutely works on many of the strains of dinos that this other stuff doesn't work as aggressively on. There's a reason for that, and it says right in the bottle here that it's a special liquid algicide, mm. meaning it actually kills stuff, and that's why it's the sledgehammer when other things aren't working, but you still need to beat it. Yeah, so uh, thinking about algicide, this will, you know, you've got to consider your corals. There's zooxanthellae, algae in the corals, an algicide meaning that it will probably affect your corals as well, so it's some special consideration before you hit this one. Yeah, in, in many cases, you got to read the reviews. It has no effect. In other cases, that it, it might like set your corals back a little bit. Mm. A lot of times, it's because uh, the difference between people who read the instructions and did it correctly uh. and those that didn't. Uh, but you know, if you have an aggressive problem, sometimes there it requires an aggressive solution. All right, dirty sand solved. What's next? So we have a five-minute guide on cyano specifically. Check that thing out right here. And if you have dinos, I'm sorry, but the five minute solution is right here. Both of these can solve your problem in five minutes, everything you need to know.